There we go. All right, that's better. <laughs> Apparently, I double muted myself somehow. All right, hello, everybody. I will start over. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, this stream is, uh, to give you an idea, this is a series where we're building a game engine from scratch uh, using C and, for right now, Vulkan. Uh, this initially started off as a uh, series on YouTube, and we have converted to uh, doing the whole thing uh, live stream here on Twitch. So uh, all of the uh, streams that we have here will be uploaded to uh, my YouTube channel um, after the fact as an archive. So that is still part of that ongoing series there. So um, with that, uh, I do want to bring up the fact that uh, I have actually, uh, do I have plans to, uh, to also stream on YouTube? I am considering doing that as an experiment, yes. Um, YouTube's, the problem with streaming on YouTube that I've noticed is the, um, the ability to find streams on YouTube isn't so great. Uh, it's a little, it's a lot easier to find a stream on, on Twitch than it is YouTube. Um, cause you're competing with, you know, just regular videos. So, um, it is something that I'm going to do as an experiment, probably, um, with things other than Kohi at first, maybe, or I don't know. I haven't really decided yet, but yes, that is, that is in the plans. Um, so one thing between this and uh, my YouTube channel, for any of you that have followed me for any amount of time, everything that I do is experimental. I'm always trying things, always changing it up, uh, seeing what works, what doesn't, and then adjusting accordingly. So uh, that is one thing that I have on my list that I do want to try is streaming on YouTube. I've done it before. Um, I just know the discoverability on it isn't as great. Uh, so, um, with that said, I do also want to mention that uh, you may have noticed I'm on a slightly different setup tonight. Um, I've been streaming on Windows uh, because that was the only setup that I, I had where everything was kind of set up and ready to go. I think I finally got my Linux box uh, configured and all set up. So, um, I am on Linux tonight. Uh, and we're going to try uh, running the stream from there. So uh, I'm assuming you guys can hear me at this point and everything looks good um, and sounds good. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I will go ahead and continue on with the stream. Um, before I jump into the main bits of it though, uh, I do want to quickly bring up uh, our supporters list. So um, I just wanna take a quick second to thank uh, all of our supporters, uh, starting with the partners uh, of the channel. So the partners are basically the highest tier of subscription on YouTube and Patreon. So that is Caden Parker, Arslia, Garbolis Inc., Paul S., Super Awesome, and Wen Chang. Uh, I'd also like to thank all the other supporters that are listed on the screen, uh, who are a mixture of our other YouTube members, um, our uh, other uh, tier Patreon members, as well as our Twitch subscribers. So thank you all very much for your support there. In addition to that, uh, I do want to take a quick second and thank everybody who is watching the stream and following along and interacting for your support because that is greatly appreciated. Without you guys, uh, none of this would be possible. So uh, thank you very much for that. With that said, this is designed to be an interactive stream. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to jump into the chat and I will keep an eye on it and answer them uh, to the best of my ability. All right, so uh, tonight we have a little bit something different on the roster. So um, I'm just going to swap over to my Kohi project here. So tonight we're gonna do a little bit of Vulcan debugging. Um, and it's not just gonna be straight up just debugging by itself, but it's going to be um, improving our debugability of our code base a little bit. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, let me go ahead and build. And I'll run based on where we are currently. So here is the Kohi engine. All right. Um, I can go ahead and load up a scene and uh, I can unload a scene and that all works. But when we, um, if we load up the scene and we exit, we get in our terminal a few errors. And this is all well and good if you know how to parse Vulkan errors, which I've learned obviously, because I've done a lot of Vulkan stuff. But uh, if you're not as familiar um, with it, it may be a little bit daunting. And so we kind of want to take a little bit of a look at some of this stuff and see how we can maybe improve this to tell us a little bit more information. So we have a total of three validation errors. 
Um, so there's these top two validation errors, which is uh, based on uh, these two are actually the same. Um, so it's basically saying uh, a uh, cannot call VK free memory on device memory at this address that is currently in use by a command buffer. Um, and then it's basically saying the Vulkan spec state states that all submitted commands that refer to memory uh, via images or buffers must have completed execution before they can be freed, essentially, right? So uh, it gives us a URL and we can click into that, yada, yada. However, this is good information, right? This tells us what the problem is, but it doesn't tell us where the problem is, right? Uh, all we know is that we have a VK free memory being called on something for some type of memory. Um, and we don't, we don't really know what that is, right? Um, we just have an address for some memory and that's it. Like, is it an image? Is it a buffer? Like what, what is it, right? And so um, it might be good to have a little bit of extra information uh, within this validation math message to uh, accompany that, to kind of tell us where this stuff is coming from. In addition, um, we have another validation error down here uh, for VK destroy device. Um, and this one, is dealing with a sampler. So a sampler, we've got a sampler somewhere that's not being destroyed, right? And so we need to destroy the sampler before we destroy the device that it came from. And so um, again, you know, we have lots of samplers. All of our texture maps have samplers in them, right? So with that, how do we tell um, what we're dealing with here? One way is we could just kind of look at what we've changed and try and back figure it out or or try and um, just guess and start plugging code in various places. Um, but I don't find that to be very effective. And um, in the long term, that's not really going to be very sustainable, right? We could really use um, some additional information here. And so uh, that is what we're going to look into uh, tonight. Uh, Donnie, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. So um, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up our friend Firefox here. And I'm going to look up um, a, uh, an extension that we're actually already using. Um, it's called, uh, I think it was VK um, EXT debug utils. All right. And this is, like I said, this is an extension we're already actually using. And this is for debuggability. So um, we are actually using this. Whoops. If we take a look at our code here in our Vulkan backend, we go to initialize. And we go down to the section where we are creating our, actually even before we create our de debugger, right? We have this if define debug, and we're pushing into our required extensions, this VK EXT debug utils extension name, which if we hover over this is VK EXT debug utils, right? So we're already actually loading this extension, okay? But uh, we need a little bit more for it, from it, right? So right now, all we're actually utilizing out of it uh, is uh, just the, um, the debug messenger, right? So there's actually a lot more that this extension offers us that we haven't really been leveraging. So, um, for those of you who are familiar with um, with Vulkan, uh, it actually is based on um, two previous extensions. So there was like a debug report extension, and then there was another one, which was debug marker. So we're not gonna use everything tonight, but we are gonna add some stuff that kind of helps us um, identify these things a little bit better. So um, we have a bunch of new uh, commands here, a few new structures. Um, and some function pointers, right? And uh, the reason that we have these function pointers is because we're actually gonna have to load these things dynamically. So um, the ones we are gonna be interested in, uh, if I can find them here, let's see, we have, um, wait, there's our messenger, here we go, uh, is these two. So we have VK set debug utils, object name ext3, right? Uh, so this is the manual the manual three page, right? So what this allows us to do is attach a name to a Vulkan object of a given type. And then we also have um, this VK set debug utils object tag ext. And this allows us to attach any sort of free form data uh, to an object. And um, we can 
use this to sort of trace back where some of these issues might have come from. And so these are the things that we're going to set up uh, tonight. And then um, we'll show how that actually plays into the validation layers that we're already using um, to give us a little bit better troubleshooting information. And if we have a little bit of time, we might implement some of those other things like the debug markers and whatnot. But this is the primary thing that we're interested in for right now. So the first one I'm going to start with is the um, debug utils set object name, because I think this is the, the most useful one that we've got so far. So uh, if we come down here, um, and again, I'm hoping that you guys following along uh, do refer to the Vulkan spec, um, at least on occasion, uh, to understand how this stuff works. It gives you all kinds of um, information on the parameters, valid usage of these things, and so forth, right? So uh, the things that we're namely interested in uh, is the, the valid usage, um, which is basically saying our object type must not be VK object type unknown, which makes sense. Um, it goes off of a object handle, which uh, generally speaking, that lines up with an address here, right? So if we have, uh, let me expand this up again. So um, here we have this VK device memory. That's a handle, right? This is another handle. And then uh, this VK sampler here, that's another handle, okay? And so uh, that has to be valid. Um, and then it basically says that uh, whenever we set this up, that uh, the object handle has to come from the same uh, VK instance um, that it was initially, um, let's see, let me rephrase that. The object handle is a valid handle of an instance level object. The VK device um, identified by device, which is a parameter you have to pass in, must be a, def a descendant of that same VK instance, which it's always going to be in our case. Um, and then it also says that the, uh, the device and physical device must be you know, that just, that hierarchy or dependency must must be the same. In our case, that's never really going to change um, because we only have one of those things, right? Um, and then, yeah, I think this is basically just kind of saying the same thing over and over again, um, just for, you know, it has to line up with the device, the physical device and the instance. Um, the other thing is uh, pname info must be a valid pointer to a valid um, VK debug utils object name info extension structure. So this is the other piece that we're going to need. So basically what we do is we fill one of these, one of these guys out and then we pass it to this method here. And then we just check the result to make sure it was successful, which it's either going to be a success or out of host memory or out of device memory. All right. So, um, what we're going to wind up doing is we are going to uh, create a little function to sort of do this for us, but we only want to do this in debug mode, right? Because we're only actually setting this thing up um, or, or using this extension in debug mode. Cool. I'm listening to your stream while I work on my own engine. Turns out I'm doing the exact same thing before I tackle descriptors. I'm doing direct 3d 12. Nice. Yeah, um, this is something I kind of meant to do a long time ago and completely forgot about. <laughs> and then um, when these errors came up the other night, I'm like, hmm, I think I know where they're coming from, but this is probably a good opportunity to go ahead and implement this. So, all right. So uh, the first thing that we're going to actually have to do is if we look in the extension documentation, it actually gives us some examples of some of this stuff, which is pretty sweet. So um, let's see, where was, here we go. So uh, similar to how we had to do for the uh, debug messenger, we are going to have to load a function pointer for these things because they're not, uh, it's an extension, it's not loaded up as part of Vulkan Core. So we actually have to uh, obtain a function pointer to that. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, basically what they have here, um, where we stand up a function pointer, we get the uh, instance proc address using the Vulkan instance and then the function name. Um, do they actually have the exact one written here? I don't think they do, but it's more or less the same pattern. Oh, yep. It is right here. Okay. So um, this is actually a pretty good example of the way it works, right? So we um, go ahead and obtain our function pointer, which will save that off. Um, instead of calling it every single time. And then we'll set up a structure 
and then call a function, right? So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to place this in the Vulcan context. And we're only going to place it in the Vulcan context uh, if we have uh, debugging enabled. So I'm actually just going to copy this and go to the definition of Vulcan context. And I guess, it, uh, let's see, yep, we already do have uh, a debug section already put in here, right? So I don't even need this. All we need is just this. So uh, we have PFN set debug utils object name extension. That is going to be the function pointer. Um, so uh, brief the function pointer to set debug object names. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and do the um, the one for tagging as well. Uh, I think that I'm not sure if that one was in here actually. Was there an example? I don't think so, but it's more or less the same thing. Uh, so in fact, uh, what I can actually do is just copy this, come down here, and it's literally instead of object, it's just tag, I believe. And then we can just say tag, right? Uh, and here we'll change this to, oh, is it, it's not tag. Uh, oh, I have tag name there. I think it's just tag. Is it not? Object tag. Okay, I deleted the wrong part. Okay, so this should be object tag. Name should go away. Okay. Um, Right, so now we can um, use one of these function pointers to set that stuff up. All right, uh, so that's Vulkan types. Um, Vulkan backend. We are going to need um, some new methods for this. So I'm gonna actually put these, let's see, do we have any if def debug here? We do not. So I'm gonna put these all the way at the bottom. And um, I will use if def debug, right? Because um, we're basically going to, we're gonna set these functions up to do different things. Um, if, uh, if debug is enabled um, or if debug is disabled, we're basically gonna have it do nothing. So that way we can put these all over the place in our code. Um, and we don't have to have all this if defined debug stuff all over the place. We can just call it and then uh, let our macros sort of figure it out for us. So um, with that said, uh, we will need to define um, a function first off. So we'll say a B8 Vulcan um, set debug object name. Um, Let's see, we're probably, yeah, every, everything here takes the, the plugin. So we're gonna take the plugin as well. We may or may not need that. Um, we need the device, which we can get from the plugin. Um, and then this structure needs, I thought I had it here. Here we go. Um, so it needs the structure type, uh, which is obviously just that. So we don't we don't actually need that. Uh, P next. P next is a is null or a pointer to a structure extending the structure. So we're not going to use that. Uh, so we need the object type, which is VK object type, and an object handle, and then uh, obviously a, an object name, which is a constant character array. So I think I'm just going to do it in this order. Uh, so we'll say object type um, say 
u64 object handle and constant character array I will say object name okay uh, so we got that um, I'll do the tag here in a minute. I just want to finish this thought and then we can sort of explain how this works uh, afterwards. So uh, this is the actual function prototype that we're going to use, right? But we're still only going to define that um, in debug. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to define a macro. So um, we will define um, and then this case we'll say VK set debug object name. Um, I guess I'll still say backend um, object type um, object handle and object name. Right? So we're going to define that as a call to this guy. So backend object type. Why am I typing all this out? I could just copy pasta this. Right? Uh, object handle and object name. All right. Um, so all that's going to do is basically just call that. All right? However, uh, if we do not have debug defined, we are still going to define this with all these parameters. Oops. Why did that not? What happened here? Did I cut instead of paste? Apparently. So we're still going to define this, right? but we're not going to do anything. In non debug builds. All right? So this way we can basically just call this VK set debug object name um, from anywhere in the code. We can litter them throughout our code and, um, and not have to worry about it. And when we do a non debug build, uh, it basically just defines it to nothing and it just goes away, right? Similar to how we kind of did some of our logging stuff. So um, we have that. We should probably also do the tagging while we're at it. So let me go to our tag. Um, and then this has its own structure. So it needs an S type, a P next, which I don't think we're going to use. Correct. Um, it needs an object type, an object handle, a tag name, which is a numerical identifier of the tag. I don't know if that has to be unique or not. Uh, the tag name parameter gives a name or identifier to the type of data being tagged. This can be used by debugging layers to easily filter data for only to use that implementation. Okay, so I guess it's literally just a number. So I'm probably just going to use zero for that. Um, so the next thing we have is tag size, which is the number of bytes of data to attach to the object, and then a p tag which is uh, a pointer to an array of tag size bytes containing the data associated with the object, right? So um, that should be nothing but a void pointer, which is, is what it is. So um, I'm assuming that that takes a copy of that data. I'm not 100% sure though. We'll have to test that. Okay, so the things we're going to need here is basically just object type, object handle, tag name. I probably am just going to zero that out. Uh, tag size and p tag. 
So um, we'll say B8 uh, Vulcan, if I can type set debug tag. Uh, we'll say object tag to kind of keep, keep it aligned with uh, what's there. So we need these same parameters first. So we need the back end, the object type, which why isn't this actually coming up? Oh, IntelliSense is being slow. Okay. Um, we need a tag size and then a void pointer to tag. So we need a uh, U64 tag size and a uh, const void pointer tag data, we'll say, right? So that is our function prototype for that. So similar to how we did this one, we are going to do the same thing. Uh, we're just going to change this up for tagging, right? So tag, uh, we have backend, uh, object type, object handle. Uh, then we have tag size and tag data. And backend, object type, object handle, tag size, tag data. Okay, uh, we need to change this function name. So this needs to be object tag. All right, uh, so now we have that set up. Uh, let's just copy this define here and move this down here. Okay, uh, so that way we're covered on release builds for that. Okay, so the next aspect of this is we are going to, actually, I'm just gonna take this whole section of code here, go to backend, all the way down to the bottom, paste that, get rid of the else clause because we don't need that down here. Uh, we also don't need the defines. We are just going to fill out our, whoops, our new functions here, right? And uh, this is a debug section only, so again, this code won't even exist in production builds. So, uh, going back to the spec, um, we will start with this guy. So, um, in fact, I think they had an example of this one. So I'm just gonna cheat here and grab their example. This is all logging stuff. Here we go. All right. So here is our structure. Uh, this is gonna be, we're just gonna call this name info. Um, okay, so uh, the VK structure type is obviously not gonna change. Um, P next is gonna be zero. Uh, VK object type, uh, we're gonna take that in here. Um, the handle itself, we're gonna take it in here. Um, in fact, we should probably make this a void pointer because that's gonna get weird to use otherwise. Uh, so let's make these both void pointers. Oops, not object type, object handle rather. Otherwise we have to do that cast everywhere and that's kind of annoying. So let's just handle the cast in here. All right. Um, so this is object handle um, and then name. Uh, what was that object? Name, All right? Um, so object type, object handle. Uh, actually, these comments are really aren't necessary. This is kind of obvious. All right, let's just be a little bit cleaner about that. Okay, so we fill out that struct and then we call this guy, which we actually haven't set up yet. So we need to do that next. Um, but that is going to be on backend uh, internal context. Do we, 
yeah, I guess I could just do the cast in line. Open context. Oops. Um, okay. And then, oh, you know what? We need this more than once. So let's just do a cast up here. So Vulcan context, context equals that. Then we could just say context and then context device, logical device, and the name info. So the example they were using was for an image, but we're gonna make ours uh, work with, with any type. As long as there's a VK object type, it'll work with it. All right, um, that should do it for there. Um, we do no, still need to set up these function pointers, so I guess we should probably go ahead and do that. Um, but we need to do this after we initialize our instance. So uh, this is where all the validation layer stuff is done. So here's the VK create instance. Um, doing a little cleanup there. Okay, so here's our debugger. This is probably where we're going to want to do it, right after we do our debugger, right? So uh, load up debug function pointers. So we can say context dot. Um, oh, you know what? because I still have context. Hmm. Never mind, ignore me. Okay, so context, um, PFN, uh, object name extension equals, and then I think it literally just did the thing and cold casted it. So yeah, I'm just gonna grab this guy here instead of typing it. All right. Um, and then this is context instance. And this is the set debug utils object name extension. Okay. So um, there is that. Uh, we should probably also validate that that actually exists now. So if this does not exist, uh, we are going to bleat about it. Um, so we'll say, I guess, K error. Eh, we'll do a K warning. Um, unable to load function pointer for this. debug functions associated with this will not function, will not work. Let's say that, oops. All right, um, we're not gonna abort. We're just gonna basically just warn about it and move on. So I'm gonna copy pasta this and do the same thing for object tag. Right. Um, tag and then tag and one more time tag. Okay. So we should be good there. All right, uh, let me see. So I'm starting my first year in college majoring CS. Do you have any advice to get a head start? I have no coding experience or knowledge. Well, uh, Donnie has wise words here, you can do it. Um, so all I would say is 
go into it with an open mind, right? Um, don't get hung up on details early on, trying to um, focus on one particular path or language or anything, right? Um, keep your keep an open mind uh, as to the various different technologies out there, the various different programming languages, um, and get an understanding of what is what all is out there. And I would say do a little bit of research into what you think you might want to go into in terms of development. So um, whether it's games development or whether it's web development, you know, the, the, the tech stacks for those things are very, very different things. Um, so like you wouldn't use C++ for web development. You could technically, um, but nobody does that for a reason. Um, but yeah, I would, I would understand what you want to go into and start maybe looking into some of the things you might want to learn, but at the same time, keep an open mind because learning more than one programming language is actually going to be a really good thing. Um, because it'll open your mind to different ideas and patterns and, and, uh, thought processes. Um, if you have no coding experience, that tends to be a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy failing. Cause you will do it a lot. I do it live on stream all the time. <laughs> so get comfortable with, uh, errors and your code blowing up all the time. Cause it's going to happen. Um, I mean, if you watch my stream long enough, you'll see it happen here and I'll be pounding my head against the desk going, why? Why doesn't this work? Or worse yet, sometimes your code will work and you don't understand why. I think that's a little bit worse. Um, but, you know, just uh, get used to failing. <laughs> that's that's a good way of putting it, yeah. Um, but understand that every time you do, you'll learn something from it. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, yeah, self-taught without college, and I promise you will have things just click one day. So, it, so that's the funny thing is, is um, I'm actually self-taught as well. I did go to college, but I went to college for art. Um, I didn't go to college for programming. So all the programming stuff uh, I know I've taught myself over the years. So it's definitely, definitely possible. Um, you'll have way better tools and opportunities uh, to learn things than than I did for sure. All right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of us self-taught guys out there. <laughs> um, yeah, in my case, I, programming was always something I dabbled in when I was younger. Um, I started messing around with QBasic when I was like seven or something. And um, it always just kind of interested me, but I never write, like did it professionally until after college, really. I did some internships and things like that beforehand, but um, I went to college for art to decide that art wasn't the way that I wanted to go in my career, and I chose coding instead, which is odd, I know. But be aware that that might happen too. <laughs> you might get in there and you might decide that you don't want to do it, um, and that's perfectly fine as well, but you never know. Or you might just be, you might get into it and determine that you absolutely love it because you're basically a demigod at that point. You can create something out of nothing, right? Um, yeah, it's definitely not all about coding for sure. Uh, it's more so like you'll spend more time debugging and thinking about problems and thinking about designs than you ever will coding. I guarantee it. Um, I would say probably 70 to 80% of what you'll be doing is debugging and or designing or thinking about it. Yep. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that too. Write things down physically, drawing things. Yeah. Uh, keep your, keep physical notes, right? Like I keep, I keep a, a notebook here full of physical notes. Your degree isn't even related to computers. Yeah. I know a few guys that are like that who wound up going the programming route and it wasn't even related. Bought a second notebook today. Nice. Yeah, I have... For me, it's like a, a, a combination between notebooks and sketchbooks. Um, some of my older videos on YouTube, I kind of go through my sketchbooks and stuff. But 
um, I take my notes in my sketchbooks as well. So there's all kinds of like drawings and, and notes on like designs for systems and stuff in the same book. It's weird, but whatever works for you. I hope that helps. Okay, so um, our new functions, we basically need to check to make sure that these things exist, right? Um, because if they don't, that will give us an error, which we don't want. That's no bueno. So, uh, let's see. So, this function, I think it said, it returns a VK result. So I think I could just use a VK check on this. That should be good enough. Um, so I'll do VK check. Oops, around that. All right. Uh, and that should be sufficient. Um, and then at this point we will return true. Otherwise we will return false. And I guess this, this result doesn't really matter all that much, um, but if you wanted to ever check it for some reason, I guess you could, right? Uh, okay, so. Uh, I'm going to copy this structure because it's 90% the same and I'm just going to change names down here. So um, this is going to be object tag. Um, and then this is going to be object tag. Uh, and then this object tag. Takes in the device and the info. So this is what the Let's see, really all you should have to fill out is tag size and p tag. So um, let's see, it was structure type, p next, object type, object handle, object type, object handle, and then tag name we said was going to be a zero. And then tag size and p tag. So we'll say tag size and tag data, right? Uh, and this is going to be tag info. This will be renamed to tag info here and here. Um, we switch that, I think. That should be all that's required for that one. So they're almost, they're almost the same, right? Um, they're very similar functions. Okay. So, um, we've done that. Uh, we've hooked up our um, initialization, which should be here. I think that's all we need to do to actually use it. So, um, I guess let's start with, um, Let's start with Vulkan device, actually. So Vulkan device um, is one of the one of the nameable types of objects, right? Uh, so this just takes the Vulkan context. You know what? This doesn't actually have the plugin. We don't need the full plugin. I'm going to change this up a little bit. Instead of the back end, I'm going to say it should take the Vulcan context. So let's just change that real quick. Vulcan, whoops. Vulcan context. Context. Vulcan context. And then we'll change that all the way down here too. That will also need eliminate the need for that cold cast. And we could just use this context, right? Because some of these other 
files, like the only thing that really has the the, the backend plugin is going to be in this file. And I don't really want to force the other files to have to have that. So I think this makes a little bit more sense. So if we go back to Vulkan device, uh, when we are creating the device, um, we can actually name it. So we're not talking about the physical device. Um, we want the logical device. So uh, that is going to be right here. So here's where we create the logical device. So right after this, we can then say um, uh, VK, uh, what did I call that again? VK set debug object name. Set debug object name. Does this not have the back end included? It does not. Should it? I'm wondering if I should actually move that. Perhaps to Vulcan Utils. Because this has Vulcan types, which has Vulcan context in it, I believe. Yes. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to do that. Okay. Sorry. We're going to move some code again. That is part of doing it live as well, is sometimes you just change your mind midstream, and it's going to happen, and it's okay. So um, we're going to put this stuff in Vulcan Utils, just because I don't want to have to include the entire back end every single time we go to do something with this. Um, so that means I can get this out of here and go to Vulcan Utils C, go all the way at the bottom, and there we are. Um, oops, I forgot. Nope, the end def is there. We should be good. All right. Um, and then I can include include Vulcan utils dot h. Right. Um, okay. So now we can say uh, the context. Uh, the object type is going to be VK object type device, right? Uh, the object handle is going to be the address of, wait, no, it's not going to be the address of because I think it's already a pointer. Context device logical device. And then the object name is going to be, um, we'll call it Vulcan logical device. Alright. Uh, let's go ahead and build this real quick. And we'll run it. Alright. And we'll quit out of this. And let's see. Out of curiosity, I'm wondering if it adds the device name to our message here. It does. So you see that this message is a little bit different. So uh, validation error, um, VK free memory, blah, 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 blah. Object handle is this, name equals Vulcan logical device, which is what we put here. So it's gone ahead and because we have this name here, it's gone ahead and included that in our validation message. So this is gonna be an extremely powerful thing for other things. Um, such as our device memory or um, or what happens to be using it, right? So all we need to do now is basically copy this code and go elsewhere and start looking for like VK free memory, right? Where are we using VK free memory? Well, we'll search for VK free memory. Okay, so there's two places in the Vulkan backend and then once in Vulkan image. So let's go ahead and start with Vulcan image. And um, that's in the destroy, okay? So uh, in the create, we want to go ahead and 
add something to that memory so that we can actually see this, right? So um, when we go to create, um, uh, let's see, we create the image itself. So we should probably actually tag that, right? Uh, the image itself, do we have, we have a width and a height. We don't have any sort of name here though. So let me search the code base for Vulkan Image Create, see how many instances of that we have. Uh, looks like we do four calls to it. So that won't be that hard to actually pass through a name for these things. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and modify this function to also take in a name. Um, texture type format, and let's put name, let's put name here at the end, right? So we'll say constant character array name. And we'll update this to reflect that, a name for the image, right? And then uh, in our image.c, we will put down here const character pointer name. And I suppose we should probably actually store this in the image as well. So the Vulkan image has uh, our handle here, uh, our memory, our view, requirements, all this stuff. And we can actually um, resize images. So we probably ought to hold on to the name in case we have to refresh any of this stuff. So uh, I will say character array name. And we'll say uh, the name of the image. Nat Aders, thank you so much for following. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm behind on comments here. Uh, let's see. I told my friend if he knows how to write an Excel spreadsheet and use functions, you're already making progress. That's true. That is a form of programming, you could say. Uh, I think it's better to see the moving and everything. It shows the full process personally for what it is, time consuming. Then again, I would watch paint dry. <laughs> yeah. So one of the reasons I decided to go live with all this stuff is because um, I thought that it would be valuable to show uh, my thought process behind this stuff. Um, Cause I've been asked by a bunch of people, um, you know, to kind of go into that a little bit more. And I, I figure the best way to do it is while I'm sort of coding live so that you guys can see what I'm thinking, why I'm thinking it and why I make the decisions I make as I make them. Um, doesn't mean it's going to be correct all the time. In fact, a lot of times it is wrong, but at least then you understand what, you know, where my thought process was and, um, you can understand where I came from on it. All right. Um, so out image name equals string. Do we not have, we don't have our string library. So we'll include core k string. Uh, we're going to string duplicate the name. That way we don't have to worry about the life cycle of it, right? Um, so we're creating that there, which means we should also, whenever we destroy the image, uh, if image name uh, we'll say uh, k free and uh, the block will be image name and then the size will be string length image name uh, whoops plus one and then memory tag string okay and then image name equals zero. Okay, so we clean that up at the same time. Uh, all right, so when we create uh, the image, 
There's a few of these in here. I think. There's two. Oh, one's the view, one's the image. Okay, so after we create the image, that's where we're going to go ahead and set the object name. Uh, so we have the context. Uh, the object type is going to be image. Notice that we can do that for the image view as well. Uh, we already have the logical device. And then here we can just pass the image name, right? Um, why is that? Oh, it's out image name, right? Um, I don't suspect the view is going to be an issue, but I suppose we could go ahead and add that there too, if there is a view. Um, so the view let's do, we'll do the same thing here. Um, so the Vulcan object type is going to be, uh, image view. Um, the, oh, you know what? I didn't update the handle before. So that should be, um, image view. Let me go back up here. This shouldn't be logical device. This should be, this is the handle. This should be, um, out image handle. Okay. Um, all right. So what we're going to want here is, uh, a string format. Uh, the destination, we're going to do a character array, um, formatted name, and this is going to be texture, texture name max length is what we'll use for that. Um, we'll initialize that to zero. And then we'll say formatted name is the destination. Uh, the format is going to be um, percent s underscore view. And then we're going to pass image name. And then we'll take the formatted name and pass that here. All right. And so what that's going to give us is uh, basically the texture name or the image name underscore view. So we have a, a unique name for that. All right. Um, so there's that. Let's see. What else? Uh, we have allocate memory. I don't know if we can actually name the memory itself, but I think, I think this should be sufficient for an image for right now. Um, let's see, do we need to, I think there was a resize in here. I thought. No, I think we, I think we're probably okay. All right. So now we need to basically fix all of the colors to this to, um, pass a name. So, um, this first one is going to be for the swap chain images. Um, so I am going to name these, um, we'll say, I don't want to do this. I guess I'll do, actually, you know what? I'll do the same thing as I did here. I'll just format, format a name, right? So in Vulcan swap chain, um, we will say swap chain image underscore percent D. And then we'll plug in I, which actually that's unsigned, so that should be a U. And then uh, we'll pass formatted name as the last argument here, All right? And that'll name each one of our swap chain images. Um, 
Okay. So that should be good there. Uh, I'm just going to copy this guy one more time. So the next thing is uh, we have a texture to create here. So in this case, we get the texture, which I think texture does already have a name. So we can actually just use that. Uh, so we can say T name, All right? Uh, so that one's good. This one is texture create writable. So this is almost the same thing. Uh, this is going to be T name, right? That's still going to have a name. Uh, and then this last one is, I think, yeah, this is um, resizing an image, which essentially just recreates an image, right? Um, but again, we have a texture, so we'll have a T name. All right, uh, so um, we should go ahead and build this. What did I mess up here? How did that, how did that get pasted there? I'm not sure what happened there. Okay. Um, implicit declaration, okay, so. That means I forgot to include Vulcan utilities. Include Vulcan, whoops. Vulcan utils. Uh, again, in the swap chain, that's the same thing. Include Vulcan utils. All right, string format is an issue. Do we not include core, you know, include core k string. There we go. All right, uh, I don't anticipate this will solve our problem um, only because that last image we're dealing with um, the issue was a texture map, like it was a sampler, not an image name. So I don't think, I don't think that's actually going to help us here. Um, Vulcan logical device, VK sampler. So we don't have uh, a sampler name, right? Um, okay, so I guess probably what we should do is search for VK sampler. Um, map internal data. So when we acquire the texture map resources, that's when we create the sampler. And because we have a texture map, we should be able to say map texture name, right? So again, we can um, we can also do the string format thing, right? So um, we will say uh, percent %s text map sampler. And we'll put name in there. And then uh, we will say uh, VK set debug object name. Of course, context VK object type sampler. Um, the object handle, which is going to be the, let's see. I think it's just going to be map internal data. Uh, which is a void pointer, so we actually need a VK sampler cast there, just to make it clear as to what that is. Uh, and then the object name is going to be formatted name. Right, I think I've got everything 
correct there. So let's go ahead and build this and have a look. All right. Um, hmm. So this means that we, somewhere along the lines, are expecting things to be set up and they aren't. So look at the old call stack here. So we have map, no texture. Now why would that be the case? So we acquire the resources. So we load the material, we acquire the resources. And then we actually do, hmm. So in this case, we would probably just need to switch the, the order of operations here. We'd probably need to just acquire these resources after we assign the texture, which shouldn't actually affect anything. Um, so this is for the diffuse map. So we'll just move that here, uh, which means that we'll have to do the same thing for the spec map. Oops. Here. And then the normal map here. All right, uh, let me just see where else we're actually calling this because it's done in a few different places. Uh, the font system. Setup font data. That may or may not be an issue. Now the font variant already has that, so hopefully we'll be all right. Um, okay, so here where we're adding samplers within the shader system, we are acquiring a default map here and then assigning the texture. So we're going to have to swap that order around. Let's see. Skybox. Again, we're going to have to swap this order around. Which I think that kind of makes sense, right? We should get the texture and then set up the texture map. All right, so let's build this and see if that helps anything. I probably have missed one. Okay, it's good so far. Let's load. All right, so we loaded up successfully. Let's go ahead and quit. All right, um, aha, so here we go. So um, this tells us a little bit of information that we need to know. So at least for this one, um, we have on the Vulcan logical device, the object one handle, name skybox text map sampler. So it's our skybox that is not being unloaded properly. Um, so this immediately tells us where we need to look. Um, so as you can probably already see, like we've only added this in a few places and already it's starting to pay off, right? Uh, so at this point, we need to find out why this sampler hasn't been destroyed. Uh, and I suspect it's probably because we are not releasing those resources within here. So uh, let's see. Um, when we unload, we unload the instance resources, but wait a minute, here's the releasing of the resources for the cube map. I think that's what that was for. 
Um, and that should destroy the sampler, I believe. Acquire resources, release resources, VK destroy sampler. So that leads me to believe that we are just not unloading the skybox, maybe? Maybe in our simple scene. Uh, so we do actual unload. That's like the first thing we do. And I don't remember seeing any Yeah, I don't see any errors up here as to why that's not destroying. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint. And we will load up the scene and then escape. Yep, okay, so this is never actually getting called. Okay, I think I actually know what the problem is. So, I think the problem is our game code, actually, believe it or not. Um, so, testbed main. Um, we have... Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't unload, I don't think. Simple scene unload is called on the debug2 event. However... When we quit the application, we're not doing that. So do we have, um, it's probably gonna be under either keybinds or commands. Right. Okay, so when we hit the escape key, we're basically calling this guy, right? Uh, this fires off an event, event code application quit, which does not unload the scene. So, hey Smudge, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. So um, basically what's happening is we're, we're just bypassing the unloading of the scene, we're just quitting the application, which is definitely not what we wanna do, right? And the only, the only instance of this, for some reason, that's an issue is the skybox. Um, for some reason, everything else is somehow getting unloaded correctly, which is a little bit strange to me. Um, so what we probably are gonna have to do is have some sort of other event that fires to tell the application that we're shutting down. Um, let me think about how I want to do that. What's our user data for this? Game instance. So I guess we could probably add a function in here to handle that and call it directly instead of requiring another event set up. Probably the better way to do it. Because our game right now has boot, initialize, update, render, on resize. Oh, I guess we could use shutdown. That's probably what we, what we should do. Uh, let's see, we need testbed main shutdown. This is what we should probably do. So simple scene unload. We're going to go ahead and copy this actually. 
and go to shutdown. And I'm going to put this above the temp section because this is actually kind of our game code anyways, right? Um, and we're just going to unload the scene. All right, we're going to do the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and load. All right, there's our scene. We will escape. That doesn't look like it did it. So it's possible that shutdown is happening too late. Um, unloading scene, done. But that happened theoretically before these. Let's put a breakpoint. So we'll load up, we'll hit escape. Okay, we're unloading the scene. We're unloading. Oh, you know what? <laughs> That's right, because we don't technically do the unload until the next frame, which would never be called on an exit. Hmm. So we should probably have a way to force that. Okay. That is interesting. So uh, let's go here to our simple scene. Um, I'm thinking because now I'm thinking like what if we just call destroy instead but I think we actually got rid of destroy all right so what I'm going to do here is so b8 uh immediate and what we're going to say is ram unload immediately. Wow, spelled that wrong. Immediately instead of the next frame. Note can have unintended side effects if used improperly which is true um, because uh, if we do this while the game is still running, uh, it can actually cause things to enter a weird state. But if we're shutting down, we need that shutdown to happen now if we do this, okay? So um, in this case, if immediate, uh, actual unload scene return true okay so um, if we flag immediate uh, we'll go ahead and do it then and then boot out instead of just flipping the state right um, and then I guess we could also flip this flag um, okay so that should make that happen immediately. That means our testbed main needs to be updated. So on shutdown, this is gonna be true. And on our event code up here, it's gonna be false. All right, we'll load up the scene. We will escape. Uh, we have our breakpoint set, so I'm just going to continue on with that just to see if this actually does the thing correctly. 
And it looks like it did. So, um, interestingly, it solved all of those errors. So let me get rid of these breakpoints. I just want to make sure that it wasn't like coincidence that it did that. So I'll load, load up a scene, All right? Escape. Yep. Okay. So that solved our errors, right? Um, I was actually going to look into those other Vulcan errors that we were getting, but uh, evidently those really didn't uh, didn't need it either. So, okay, cool. Uh, so that is the fix for that. Cool. Um, great. Let's see, how are we doing on time? Doing decent, actually. So do you guys have any questions about any of that? Um, that we've gone over. <laughs> yeah, everything. Well, <laughs> I would need a little bit more specific than that, but um, so basically what, what was happening, um, I'll summarize really quickly. Um, was that we were getting, we were basically shutting down Vulcan before all of our resources had been released. So there was that, uh, um, the sampler, which was uh, used by the texture map for the skybox. Um, and then there were two other things that were, I think like buffers or something that were sort of using something or other. I don't remember even what they were at this point. Um, but basically... Vulcan requires you to shut down things in a um, very specific order. You basically have to release all the resources that you've um, acquired before you actually shut down um, or release the device. And anytime those things are out of order, uh, the validation layers will yell at you about that and throw errors. And so that's uh, basically what was happening. Now, you could, on a shutdown, not care, right? But I don't like to do that. Like, I don't I don't like to have, I like a clean shutdown. Um, and so uh, that is basically what we are trying to troubleshoot. And uh, to get to where we got to, um, I added the capability to name objects, right? So I'm not gonna go through the code base right now, I don't think, and, um, and start naming everything because that would be kind of time consuming. Uh, but it, we at least have uh, the ability to um, to name objects while we're troubleshooting. So um, we did name images um, and uh, and samplers. Uh, so that's one thing that's commonly used that will likely be troubleshooting in the issue, um, issues with in the future rather. But yeah, we have these guys to find now where um, we can say set debug object name um, and we can actually name the things and then those show up in uh, the validation error messages. Um, and then we actually have this object tagging ability where we can attach uh, additional data to it. We didn't wind up using this yet, but that might help us in terms of debugging. Um, and then we defined uh, macros around these so that uh, we only actually get these uh, built out and fully defined in debug builds, but in release builds, they basically define to nothing, which means when it gets compiled, they go away. Okay. Um, the next thing, let me do, was it, uh, let me open up render doc. Um, if I can remember exactly where, where it is. Um, yeah, I think it was Q render doc. And for some reason, it showed up huge on another screen. I want to show the other advantage to naming things. So we're going to launch application. Uh, we're going to load our last settings, which is testbed here. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll capture the first frame, right? And then uh, we'll also capture another frame after that. So let's go ahead and launch. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what RenderDoc is, 
uh, RenderDoc is uh, a debugging tool used for graphics programming, right? So it can connect in and allow you to capture frames and whatnot. So I just hit the F12 key and captured a frame here. Um, and that allows us to kind of look at the, the, the frame, see how it's rendered and whatnot. Um, but uh, RenderDoc also picks up on the changes that we just made. So um, looking at this particular frame that I captured here, uh, if we take a look at here, we have our color passes, right? So um, if we take a look at, um, uh, let me see if I can remember how to actually get to it. There is, is it inputs? Resource inspector, it might have been. Yeah, here we go. So um, ordinarily, what you get is you get just sort of, you know, buffer and then a numerical ID, right? Or you get command buffer and a numerical ID. So each of these resource types just basically tells you it's a resource type with a numeric ID. But with the naming stuff that we added, now we actually have names, right? So we can actually see um, what these things are named. So like where we added it for materials, we can actually see that now. And when we click into it, we can view the contents of it and see what that actually looks like. So um, naming these objects, um, eventually we'll, we'll name a lot of these things, um, will give us the power to be able to say, okay, well, where did this come from, right? Um, so right here, we can see all these Sponza textures, right? Uh, here's our Skybox texture. Here's our Skybox text map sampler, right? All these things um, will have um, names associated with them. Here's our texture atlas for our fonts, right? So if we wanted to see what our um, uh, our font looked like, right? We can view the contents of that. And these are the characters that we actually used and it generated dynamically, for example, right? Um, so you can kind of see how that might be extremely useful to have things that are named. Now, it looks like we have a bunch of texture map samplers for things that aren't named. Um, I'm guessing these are for textures that uh, weren't named at the time of texture map creation. So we'll have to fix that. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think you can kind of see how powerful naming this stuff could have been, or can be rather. All right. Um, there was one other thing that I guess I could show along with this. Um, let's see if we can make it work in time because we still have a little bit of time left. So I'm going to put render doc away for a minute and put the terminal away for a minute and go back to our Firefox page here because we had some other things in here that uh, we could use. So um, one of these was the ability to put markers in our code. Um, I think it was this debug label, I want to say. This has changed since I first used it a couple years ago because um, it used to be a different extension. So let me just make sure that this is... Okay, so basically what we can do is... Uh, there is a command that we can add to a command buffer where we can see, um, we could basically label a section of commands um, as a particular thing. Um, and so what I mean by that is we can say like, this is the skybox render pass, this is the color render pass, you know, um, things like that. Um, and then we can actually see that in render doc when we, when we go to debug. Um, so let's go ahead and get this in there because this will actually help us, uh, with debugging as well, um, potentially in the future. Cause, uh, right now in render doc, um, all we have for a, um, a frame is just color pass one, color pass two, color pass three, copy clear pass one. Like we don't know just by looking at this, what that might be. Um, Do we have an example in here? 
I think it's just going to be the PFN, just like we did before. So let's go to our uh, Vulcan types. And our Vulcan context, which is here. Um, and we're going to add PFN. Um, command begin debug utils label extension and then PFN will get rid of the VK, right? So there's a begin and an end for this. So we'll go end. Uh, I think I think I got all that right. All right, so let's just look in here. Um, and we're basically just going to follow this same pattern, right? So we're going to do a little bit of copy pasta here. So here is the type. Here is the name. Uh, and this one's going to be VK. Right? Um, VK. And there. Okay. So that's the begin and the end. All right. Get rid of these guys. So we'll load up those. Um, and then we probably need to expose a way to tag this from outside the renderer. So, hmm. So I'm thinking we probably ought to go back to Vulcan Utils. and set up uh, these functions. So let's look at, uh, at our Firefox page here. All right, so PFN begin, All right? Um, and I think all this takes is the takes a command buffer and this label info, uh, which I need this. Um, yeah, let's grab this, I guess. So we'll say const. Um, label info equals that. Uh, so this is going to be structure type is going to be VK debug utils label, whoops, label there it is. All right, so we have that. Um, P next is going to be null. Uh, the label name is going to be um, whatever we pass in. And then we have a color that we can define because we can actually color code this, right? So uh, it looks like we're going to need... Um, did I start making this inside the other function? I did. What a dingus. Hold on. I need to undo everything I've done and put it into a new function. Um, we want to Vulcan begin, um, I guess label, Vulcan begin label, um, we'll say VK command buffer, buffer, 
and then all we need is a what are you doing VS code const character pointer uh, label name all right uh, so we'll take label name here um, and then and then uh, vec for color and um, that should be all we need for that okay um, this is gonna have to be color dot elements should be that is a float for right why does it not like that F32 can I not not getting why it doesn't like that because that actually is an array of four okay um Do I literally have to do F32 C4 equals this? Do I have to initialize it this way? Is it going to make me do that? Wow, okay. All right. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to have to do that. All right. Um, we are going to need the Vulcan context, though. So we need context, um, the buffer itself. So that's going to be just buffer command buffer and then um, label info and that should be why are you bleating does this return anything oh it's void that's why okay I can't be check VK check that because it's void um, really? Why does it keep devolving into that type? This is literally just a, hmm. It's the same thing. I guess because it's, I guess I can't assign it that way. Uh, okay, copy. Do I not have memory? Okay, copy memory. Um, we want to do destination is label info dot color and then uh, address of color. And then size of F32 times four. There. Okay. I think that should do it. Um, the only other thing we need is the end label function. Um, Which I think just takes the command buffer. Yeah, it does. So um, all we have to do Q 
here is end label and we don't need these things all we need is the context and the buffer we don't need this we don't need that uh, end label uh, and then just the buffer oops yeah there we go okay all right, uh, and that should do it. So I'm gonna copy these over to the header file. And we're gonna do these the same way we did these other functions since they are debug. So, um, We'll define VK set debug. Actually, no. Begin debug label. That takes the context. Uh, we'll call it command buffer. Um, label name and a color and we will call Vulcan begin label passing context command buffer label name and color and the end is basically the same thing except all it needs is the command buffer and the context so these other two things can go away, right? Um, get rid of the semicolon at the end of that. Great. Um, so we have that. Oh, that should be end. So we have these two. Let's move them also down here. Get rid of what they actually define. Copy pasta this just to make it explicitly obvious what's going on. And now we should be able to call these from our code. So um, let's say, for example, we want to go to, I don't know, render pass, right? Uh, render pass begin. Um, does the pass actually have a has an ID? I don't actually have a a name, which is kind of crappy. So we should probably have some sort of name for a render pass too. Again, this is only really for debug purposes. Let's take a look at the front end real quick. Render pass create. Um, render pass config. Okay, so we could actually get away with this without even having to change our interface here because we could just add it to our config, right? Oh, the config actually even has a name. So we're literally just not even using the name at all. I guess not. Let's fix that, shall we? So we'll go to render pass. And we're not keeping a copy of the config, which is fine. Uh, but let's keep a character pointer name and we'll do a string duplicate off of that so we'll say out render pass name equals string need our core k string uh, 
duplicate config name, right? Um, so that's our render pass creates, our render pass destroy. Uh, we really just need to say if render pass, uh, whoops, just pass rather, pass name, then k free pass name uh, string length pass name plus one for the null terminator memory uh, tag string okay and then pass name equals zero okay so we got that now we have a name to deal with um, to work with in here. So when we go ahead and create uh, let's see when we go ahead and uh, begin the render pass rather uh, we have in here a VK command begin render pass and we already have a command buffer. So this would be the place to do it. So we can go uh, we can say uh, VK uh, begin debug label. Um, we'll pass our, we should have context. Um, our command buffer is going to be, we want the uh, Vulkan object, so we want the underlying command buffer handle. Uh, the label name, uh, I guess we can just pass it, um, is, do we just call it pass here? Yeah. Pass name. Uh, and then color. Uh, I suppose we could randomly generate that, right? Um, so I'll say vec4. And then for now, I'll just say 1.0, 1.0. 1.0, 1.0, right? Um, changes the floats instead of doubles. Um, F32R equals um, didn't I have a K random? I think it's in math. Math types include math k math i think that's what that's under uh, f rand f random i thought i had i thought i had a float one fk random i should probably rename that All right, um, we'll do random in range. Uh, the minimum is 0, 0.0 and the max is 1.0F. So we'll do R, G, and B. All right, um, oops, why did I use commas there? R, G, and B. So we'll replace this with R, G, and B. Whoa, why'd that delete the whole end of my line? I didn't want that. R, G, and B. All right, and then alpha is just gonna be uh, 1.0. Okay. Um, why is this complaining? Too many arguments. Maybe I need to do it. Back for color equals 
that and then just pass color. Right, okay. So we have that, uh, VK begin debug label, and then um, we can, down here, right after we end the render pass, we can call VK uh, and debug label. And all we have to do is pass context and command buffer handle. Let's build. Uh, okay. Discards const qualifiers. Oh, right. I can't be const because we're modifying it after the fact. Okay, so uh, let's go back to render doc. Uh, here we go. If I can drag it back down in the screen. All right, um, let's go to launch application. Uh, we'll launch again. We're not going to save the old capture. All right, I'm going to load up. And I'll hit F12 to capture. And I will escape. And now we can see in here that we have some very interesting stuff that has changed. We can see here that we actually have color-coded sections in here for our various render passes. Um, and also up here, we have these things built in as well. So we can see exactly how long these things are taking, how many events are handled and whatnot. Um, and this gives us an idea of what's going on in each one of uh, these, um, these render passes, for example. So um, instead of just saying render pass, zero, one, or two, whatever, um, we now have um, this to look at, right? And um, we can look at everything else below it is categorized as that. And we can actually nest these if we wanted to, um, which I may do at some point. But uh, this kind of gives you a, a little bit better of an idea of, of uh, some of the things that are um, are going on within... Uh, our render cycle within within a particular frame, right? So um, these things combined with render doc uh, will definitely help us um, in our debugging escapades in the future. All right, uh, are there any questions on that so far? Okay, I'm gonna assume now. So um, with this, um, this is pretty much everything I wanted to cover tonight. Um, we actually did pretty good timing wise. So I think uh, the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do, um, since we actually have uh, our, our scenes in a really good place, um, is I'm gonna go ahead and merge all of this into main. Um, so that it is part of the main branch, um, part of the engine, right? So I'm not going to save any of this stuff. Um, get status. So these are all of the files that we've changed thus far. Um, we are on simple scene files branch. So I'm going to get add everything. Get commits. Added Vulcan debugging um, object naming tagging um, and uh, labeling for debugging All right and I'm going to go ahead and push that And what I'll do is go into, um, I'll go into the Kohi repo. 
So let me pull that up real quick. All right. Uh, so simple scene files. Uh, this was uh, kind of what we had had worked on before. Um, we want to merge that into feature simple scenes, right? Um, so that's sort of our feature branch for simple scenes in general. So I'll go ahead and do that as a pull request just to make this journey a little bit more clear as to what's going on. Uh, okay, so we can go ahead and uh, squash and merge this. And I'm going to delete that branch. And now I'm going to go into Feature Simple Scenes and create a pull request to that to main. Now this actually says, um, that we can't create the pull request and I'm wondering why. Sure. Simple scenes, get pull. All right. So we've done that. Um, get check out main, get pull, go back to feature simple scenes, and we're going to get merge main. Yes, we do have conflicts. Several of them. Fun. Okay. Um, I wonder why it's counting these things as That's very strange. Yeah, so I'm going to keep current on all these. Um, except all current. All right. This one is I changed this from const character to just character apparently at some point. Not sure why I would have done that, but I'm going to keep current on this one as well. Uh, skybox. Why is this so vastly different? I don't quite understand. I'm going to keep current on all of this as well. I'm not sure why it's so far out of whack. Yeah, I'm going to keep current on this as well. Skybox C, this is also going to be the same thing, I think. Yeah, we just move stuff around here. Current, material system, this has one little block that's changed. Wow, a comment, really? Okay, I'm going to accept all current here. Merge conflicts suck. Um... Just trying to add the skybox back. You know what? I'm just going to actually delete this. I'm not going to keep either one. I'm going to get rid of that whole thing. So we don't need the skybox there. In fact, we don't even need these anymore. They're dead. Um, okay, we definitely want to keep current on all of this, I'm pretty sure. All right, so um, we're going to do a save all. And I'm going to do a clean and a rebuild just to ensure that I didn't completely bork something. We should be able to, you know, load, unload, and all that stuff and be good. So, let's load. All right, that looks good. Unload. Load again. Unload again. Load again. Right, and quit. Okay, so I think we're good. 
Um, I'm not sure why all those conflicts were there, but it is what it is. So get, so get commits merged from main get push. So now, if we refresh this, we should be able to merge. Yep, okay. So this is going to include um, all of the changes that we have made um, for scenes in general. And we're gonna merge this into main because this is stable and working at this point. And uh, anything that we do um, outside of this, uh, or anything that we do in addition to adding this, um, we can just um, add without having to be in a feature branch, I think, at this point. If we need one, we'll go ahead and create one. So I'm going to create this, and then um, I will squash and merge, confirm, delete the branch, and now everything is in the main branch. So I'm going to go ahead here to Kohi, get checkout main, get pull. Oops. Get pull. And there we are. So um, we should have all of our latest changes. Um, yep. So everything is in the main branch as of right now. So, um, with all that said, uh, that's going to wrap it up for the stream tonight. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys interacting and following along definitely you know, means a lot to me um, that you guys are, are following along with this project. I, I really appreciate the support that you guys have shown. So uh, thank you for that. And um, yeah, I'm going to see. Let's see if there's a channel I can raid real quick. Um. You know what? Uh, I'm going to raid Ferret Software again because Ferrets are cute. And I know I could use a, uh, <laughs> a little bit of a mental break after all this stuff tonight. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna raid Ferret Software. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, these are the Ferrets that are owned by Pirate Software. Um, and this is a stream channel that, or a, a Twitch channel stream that he started. Um, that uh, all the proceeds for it go to caring for these particular ferrets. So um, all their food, their vet bills and stuff is all uh, paid for by that. So um, yeah, that's basically it. So anyways, um, thank you guys so much again for, uh, for joining me and uh, enjoy looking at some cute ferrets. And I'll see you guys on the next stream.